Welcome to day six of the 12 DIYs of Christmas. We're halfway through. My name is Amanda Arneal and I teach hand lettering and art tutorials here on YouTube and also in full length, in-depth online courses on amandaarneal.com. Today, we are going to be taking a super cheap teapot from Ikea less than 10 bucks, I think, and turning this into a beautiful work of art that is a perfect Christmas gift. Consider stuffing it with a few little packages of hot chocolate or a Starbucks card or even both, and you have a gift in a pot. Let's get into designing the outside of this pot so that it's completely personalized. Today we are going to be putting a floral pattern on the outside of the pot, easily using some outdoor vinyl, an iPad, and your favorite cutter machine, either a Silhouette or a Cricut or a Brother, whatever cutter machine you prefer. But let's get into first creating our design. To get a sense of exactly how you want your design to go. Lay your teapot down on your desk and you can use your iPad to take a picture of it. I know typically we try not to take photos with our iPads, but this is one instance when it's acceptable. Now your picture definitely does not have to be perfect. You just want to get a sense of what the pot is shaped like so that you have an idea of the designs you might do and where you might place them. We're going to do each design individually so that you can stick them on separately, which will help to account for the curve of the pot, but it will also help to allow little whoops-a-daisies to happen without it being a big deal, which I know in my case, is something that always happens. So if you're anything like me and you think that your project's gonna be perfect and then it's not, this will help make that not such a big deal. We've already built the whoops daisies into the design. Head into Procreate and you are just going to create a new canvas. You can use a square one, it doesn't need to be anything amazing. And then in here, we're going to add the picture that we just took of our teapot. Add insert a photo and there it is. Click on that, zoom in a little bit more. We don't need any of the other stuff. You just need a sense of where your teapot is. So once you have that placed where you want it, you're going to want to add a new layer. And on this layer, we are going to draw one of the floral designs for your overall piece. Having the picture underneath is really helpful because it allows you to get a sense of the scale of what you're drawing and how large you want to place it onto your pot after. It will also help you to figure out some of the placement issues for your designs and also how they might sit beside one another. Now, I don't know how comfortable you are with drawing flowers, but if you are super into drawing your own flowers, then go nuts. But we are going to be drawing a relatively simple flower and then manipulating it in a few ways so that we can reuse it and it won't be obvious that it was manipulated and the same flower over and over. Turn down the opacity on your teapot layer and just with black in your inking, choose your gel pen and we are going to start to draw one flower. Now this is going to be the simplest of all the flowers. You're going to draw an upside down teardrop, an upside down teardrop, an upside down teardrop. Ta-da! It's amazing. Now having those upside down teardrops, you do want the bottoms of them to meet up and then you're going to just color in a little shape on the bottom. This is the base of the flower where it meets the stem. And then from there, just draw out a stem line that goes past your teapot base. Because while we are designing these for being on the teapot, you want to give yourself a little bit of flexibility. This way, if it's a bit longer, you can shift it up or shift it down and then just cut the bottom part of your silhouette design off. Now, one thing I notice is that this is quite a thin line here. So it's going to probably give a little bit of difficulty getting that thin line transferred onto your teapot. But rather than deleting this, because it's a really nice base, let's just decrease the opacity of this layer. And we're going to use this sort of as a cheat sheet for our flowers. Increase the size of your brush. And I've increased mine all the way to 100 because thicker lines of vinyl are easier to work with than the super skinny fine lines. So all the way up to 100 and on a new layer, you can just retrace your flower. And of course it doesn't have to be perfect. Do your leaves color in an area at the bottom and then your stem. 
And now we're going to do this a few times. So one thing that can be really helpful is to take your cheat sheet layer down at the bottom, shift it over, and let's even flip it horizontally. Now it's facing the other way. And then what you can also do is choose to make it larger or smaller. And now because you're using this as a cheat sheet, but you're not going to use it directly, take those same shapes and modify them just slightly so that each of your flowers will look different from the next. But we're always drawing the same few components, three or four if you'd like to. Petals, a little heart sort of at the bottom to show the base of the flower, and then that stem leading down. So now let's draw in a few other designs that are also relatively simple. Again, you wanna put it on a different layer. Let's turn off our cheat sheet layer, add a new layer, and we'll move it up to the top so that we can keep similar flowers together. Let's try drawing another type of flower. It might actually be easiest if we turn off the visibility of all of the flowers just to be able to focus on this one. And here we are going to draw another cheat sheet layer. So decrease your brush size to about 25 and you're going to do a circle, sort of a little dark oval, and then an ellipse slightly above that. This is going to show you the base of the flower and then where the petals are curving up to. Next, take your Apple Pencil and draw some lines from the base of that flower, the dot, up to the edge of that curve. And then on the inside as well, draw lines from the base up to the edge of your circle. And these don't have to be perfect. Just make sure that you're always coming out from that base point of your flower and curving up towards that edge. Decrease the opacity of this. This is your guideline for drawing in your petals. This will show you exactly where your petals should go. Again, we're still just working on our cheat sheet layer though, so keep your brush a little bit smaller and you're going to start to draw in your petals, always from this base point up, follow along your line and draw petals that sit on either side. You don't even need to go in the order that they're there. If you do them sort of a few on one side and a few on the other side, then you'll end up with a natural looking flower. And then once you've done the petals on the front side, you can go to the ones that are sitting on the back of your curve. And remember you're coming from the base here. They're coming all the way up. So draw it all the way into that flower. Continue to vary which petal you draw so that they are layered differently, but I like to sort of pull my pencil as if it's coming from that bottom point. Just don't draw until you get to where the petal would be visible. And once you have all your petals in there, you'll probably notice that you need some sort of center point like the middle of the flower. And because we're just using black and white, simply drawing in that center of your flower in black will look very nice and give you that foundation for the petals that you might need. Now, of course, because this is just our cheat sheet, now we are going to trace it again. So turn off your layer underneath, add a stem to your cheat sheet, just pulling out so that your stem has a strong base to attach to, and then continue your stem all the way down past the bottom of your teapot. And now decrease the opacity of that layer, increase your brush size, toggle onto a new layer and start to redraw your petals. And of course you can make tiny adjustments if you want more petals, if you feel like a petal somewhere needs to be bigger or even softening the edges, that's what you can do now. I'm actually going to soften the edges of my petals so that rather than them being quite so pointy, they're going to have a little bit of a rounder shape. Since your brush is larger, you might feel now that you don't need as many petals, which is totally fine. You can just delete some of the ones that you feel are overwhelming or a little bit too much for your flower. Once you have your petals in, go in and draw that center to your flower and your stem. Now I felt like my stem before was a little bit heavy, so you can always lighten up on the stem a little bit, or if you feel like it's too light, you can make it heavier. One thing that can also make your flower look a lot more natural is to have a few petals that are coming down, not just the ones that are cupped up. So that's simple to do by adding them off of this bottom point of your flower. Take a little teardrop off down the side and you can even do one on the other side as well. This will make your flower look a little bit more natural. 
So now let's turn our other floral layers back on and you're going to see that there is an issue with the way that they all sit together, which is totally fine. We're expecting this and that's why we're putting each of our designs on a separate layer. You can go through and shift some of those, but again, we're gonna be cutting them individually, so you don't need to worry about that. Let's use our cheat sheet for this flower to draw another one down in this section here. It's nice too to have some that are sort of getting pushed down off of the bottom so that it looks like it's just a natural wild flower explosion. Take the cheat sheet, shift it down, and you're going to want to change the angle. You can even flip it again to get it down below and then redraw it. Redrawing on a new layer is really important because that is what's going to add the variety to your piece even though you're drawing the same sorts of flowers. But a cheat sheet is so helpful because then you're not having to come up with each of the flowers from scratch every time. Again, continue your design down below the pot even add in some of those extra petals to give it that natural look and also make it look different from the one above. And the reason you wanna do it below is because that will just give you more flexibility for your designs when you are placing them on your pot. Now, another thing that we can add onto here are some leaves. You might think there's not a lot of space for leaves, which is pretty much true. So that's great, we don't have to put too many in. Do each element that you add onto its own layer and you can even just draw in some simple leaves and have them sort of floating around. They don't need to be necessarily attached to anything. They can just be an added element filling in some of these empty spaces. Draw each leaf on its own layer. That way it can be cut individually and you can either choose to use it or not use it as you see fit. One other area that you need to think about is the front of your teapot. So if we have the two simple flowers, the two more ornate flowers sort of in the middle, it would look good to have one of the more ornate flowers right in this middle portion right here as well. So let's draw one more of those. Now it's going to be of course, on a part of the teapot that we can't see here, but it's not gonna stop us. Let's turn off the visibility of the other things that we have. Leave just your cheat sheet layer for your flower and draw one more of those that will go in the front of your teapot. So now we have an assortment of leaves drawn, we have an assortment of flowers drawn, and we're going to take those onto our teapot. But first, before we take those layers into Silhouette or Cricut to do an image trace and cut them out, you want to go through and delete all of your cheat sheet layers and your teapot layer. So the cheat sheet layers, select those guys and get rid of them. You can always turn on the visibility and check them just to make sure those are actually cheat sheet layers and not your final pieces. And then turn on the visibility of every single one of your other layers. Now it's going to look like a mess, but that's okay because we're actually going to export each one of these individually. Head up into your actions panel and here choose share, and then you're going to share as PNG files export it to your computer or whatever you use to do your cutting program and you can cut each one of these individually. I'll also save them just so I can show you how they have each gone onto their own image. So looking at the camera roll here, you will see that every single one of those flowers is there as its own separate image. Send all of these to your computer and cut them out, keeping in mind the size and scale of your actual teapot. Here, it's this big on my iPad, that's going to be way too big for the teapot. So using your ruler, measure your teapot so that you can see approximately how big you're going to want your florals to be compared to your teapot. For me, I think that's about four inches for the tallest. Let me talk about the vinyl for a second. I am using outdoor vinyl. I've tried some of the permanent vinyl on the ceramic, but I find that it doesn't really, it's not really permanent. It's like permanent for a while. So I've had better luck with the outdoor vinyl, but if you have a permanent vinyl that works really well for you, I mean, even leave that in the comments down below so that we can help each other to find the perfect products. But this outdoor vinyl, that's what I'm gonna try. I'm also going to make sure that I attach a little tag here that says, 
hand wash only. You're going to have to open every one of these individually. I'm using the Silhouette, just their free program, and selecting all of the PNG files that you've exported. They're going to open onto different documents, which is fine. We can bring them all into one. So first thing you'll want to resize your flowers. And I like to just start on one of my artboards, go to the next, choose Command or Control C, go back to your first artboard and then bring it in there. That way you can sort of set everything up all together, making sure that all of the elements look similar, they have the same similar thickness, and it's just so much easier if they're all in one place. So copy from your other artboards and then paste it into this one. Now measuring my teapot, four inches is my maximum height, so all of these are way too big. You can click over, select them all, and make them much smaller all at the same time. So we are looking for a four inch height maximum, so it should go to right about there for the maximum. But of course, we drew them a little bit longer on purpose. So do keep that in mind as you rescale. Now, you want to separate each of these into a different area of the page because we're gonna go through and trace these different elements. So make sure that they're separate enough that you can trace each of them individually, meaning you can draw a box around one without hitting another shape. Go over to the sandwich. It's a butterfly, but it looks like a sandwich. Select trace area, and you're going to trace around one shape at a time. So select one and then choose trace. And now you're going to do that for every one of the shapes that we have created. And now we want to delete the black original image that we had and just leave our cut marks. So drag your cut mark off and then delete the black image down below. Another thing that I like to do is I typically will cut extra shapes and even some of the same shapes that are a little bit smaller or a little bit larger in order to ensure that I can get all of my shapes in one cutting, not having to go back and cut again a few times. So place your different shapes onto your cut space, put them close enough that you are not wasting too much vinyl, and then with your extra space, copy a few more of your flowers. And of course, this is only one side of your teapot. You're going to have to duplicate this for the other side. So Command or Control C, and then Command or Control V to copy and paste the whole thing. And lay all of these out with any extra space. Throw a few extra leaves in there so that you can fill in any gaps that you might end up with on your teapot. Once you have all of your elements placed, you can select to send it. Of course, you want to change to your proper vinyl type, and then consider whether or not you need to do this as a mirror image. And in our case here, no, we do not. Now that you have all of your pieces ready to go, weed through them, taking the middles out so that you are left with the outline on your cutting sheet. Now, we have our designs. They're all weeded, they're ready to go. I ran out of transfer tape. So you can also just use regular packing tape. I like to stick it to my legs a few times just to get the extra stickiness off of there and use that to pick up your designs. Now you will want to start with some of your more detailed designs because those are what you're going to be placing on first. You don't have to pick all of them up right now, but definitely your larger elements are the ones you're going to want to pick up first. Once you've lifted off quite a few of your designs and you've run out of leg tape, then you want to move on to your teapot. You can reuse the tape over and over, so that's why I like to just do some of them and then I'll pull the rest off next. It's easiest if you take the lid off and make sure that any markings that are left on the teapot, you completely take off with some rubbing alcohol. Just using a little alcohol towel should be enough. It also helps to take off any oils that might be on the teapot from your hands that could also stop your vinyl from sticking quite as thoroughly as it would with a little alcohol rub. Once it's fully dry, it's time to start putting on your florals. So you can always refer back to your first design that you had on your iPad. So of course we still have that extra one that we drew that's gonna go in the front. So this gives us a sense of the placement of the elements for the teapot. Match those up and start 
putting them on your pot. Because your pot is curved, doing each of these elements separately will also make sure that they attach to the pot as cleanly as possible. If you were to do all of them, there would probably be a few air bubbles underneath some of your elements, and that then would make it less likely that they would last the test of time. Make sure that you really burnish every part of your design right onto the pot before you lift up your tape. And as you lift your tape, you also want to make sure that you are pulling at a 180 degree angle from your design so that you're essentially folding the tape right over and pulling backwards. So referring back to your iPad design, go through and add your florals onto your pot. And now you are giving a perfectly personalized teapot. Of course, you can do this exact same thing with some words, but doing a design like this where it is just some abstract flowers going around means that it can be used all year long and it also gives you some flexibility with placing the design on there to get a little bit creative like I did with this one in the back here. Have fun with your design. Draw one or two simple cheat flowers that you can then trace over and over. Every time you trace it, your design will look a little bit different so that all the way around you have beautiful, unique flowers just like they would be out in nature. This was day six of the 12 DIYs of Christmas. You can click right here to watch some of my other favorites and make sure that you subscribe so that you see all of these. There are lots of lettering tutorials here and lots of art tutorials just for you. Until next time, happy lettering.